No! I got one more day! It's tomorrow! It's tomorrow! <laughs> hey guys! It's the first week of October! You know what that means? It's Beast Wars month! I'm going to try and make it a whole month this time. October is my favorite month. I want it to be about my favorite show. And I actually have too much stuff to cover in one week of Beast Wars this time. Which is ironic, because last year I thought I might not be able to do another one of these ever again for lack of content. I reserve the right to cut the month of Beast Wars short if no one watches, though. Because, as sad as it makes me, only like half you guys care when I do Beast Wars stuff. Also, videos this month might be a little shorter than normal. I'm just begging for the YouTube robot to punish me, aren't I? But for like the last two years, I've not really been able to indulge in Spooky Month, and I would like to spend a little more time this go-around watching horror movies and playing scary games. Anyways, every Beast Wars week so far has started off with an OG Beast Wars one-step changer. So, it's Beast Wars one-step changer iguanas. But first, your likes! Please give. And if you enjoyed this video by the end and you aren't subscribed already, please consider it. And oh yes, there's that classic Beast Wars goodness. I simply cannot describe to you the joy I feel looking at this stupid little thing. Obviously, nostalgia plays a huge factor here. These toys meant a lot to Little Perspective. As a kid whose two main things were Transformers and The Zoo, this was always going to be the thing that defined me growing up. But it also helps that it's just so charming. He's an angry little lizard man with a severed head on his chest, an umbrella strapped to his back, a pair of long dookies strapped to his legs, and an unflattering color speckled with an equally unflattering color. Did someone pull this guy out of the construction site porta potty but at the same time, this cheap little thing from 25 years ago radiates quality and effort. One-step changers have sucked for years at this point. They all tend to be absolute bricks that can't pose, probably can't even stand on their own, unless they're excessively stout, and while they probably all have more paint than this does, they're usually painted with less care. Just big swaths of single colors. But this is a one-step changer that's just a full-fledged figure in its own right. This has every trait that a normal Transformer that comes out even today would have. It's just a guy who back in the day would have been like 5 bucks, now it's like 25 because fuck us, but it stands impressively against modern chug figures. And if it's a one-step changer from the last decade, then forget it. This thing is like a masterpiece compared to those. The only problem I have with this is the problem that scarred many of us to this very day. Early Beast Wars ball joints. They had not quite figured out what they were doing with these yet, and as a result, these fall off like yo mama's clothes when literally anyone winks at her. Look, I know those jokes don't fit me, and I shouldn't be making them, but at the same time, come on. Everyone's gotta do at least one of those once, otherwise you're just not living. But yeah, ball joints come off for no reason, they go back on just as easily, but that's not how I remember it being growing up. I remember these falling off and then needing to put hydraulic pressure into them to pop back on. But overall, the joints are actually really tight on this thing. It's light as hell, but that just helps it stand, and it looks like an actual figure. A quaint one, but not some BS tat for babies. I don't know why the legs have these huge cutouts in them, when at no point do these need to be there, and obviously some structural stuff is peeking out all over, plus the way the weapon bracket looks when empty is terrible. But the worst thing I have to say about my copy is that the paint on the head is about as gracefully applied as a man with no feet trying to walk down the stairs. He's got two red eyes, which I think are plastic inserts, and then just white mush below that. And outside of the paint, this isn't one of those all-time Beast Wars heads, like with Inferno or what have you. I like it because it reminds me of other Beast Wars figures and crappy sci-fi movies, but the main aspect on both of those is nostalgia, and I'd say that both those factors are dwarfed by the nostalgia I just feel for this on its own. It could remind me of nothing but itself, and I'd still be happy. You have to admit that this thing looks pretty good for a figure this old. There is an obvious age to it, but I swear this posed better than G.I. Joe's at the time, and this also transformed. It looks like an actual complete figure despite being a one-step changer, and while it doesn't blend seamlessly on a modern chug shelf, it does blend better than it has any right to. The accessory sucks, but I still love it. It's way too hard to get it off its bracket, but at the same time I can also say that it's a positive that it's not just going to fall off, and it stays on during transformation, which is a huge plus. There is something addictive about the way this snaps in and out when you transform it. And while this doesn't make the most convincing weapon, I'll take it. It's more fun than stuff we get nowadays, which mostly looks decent, but does nothing. And you may be like, Perspective, you're being way too nice. You shit on things prettier than this. Look, it's a figure from most of 30 years ago. It gets some slack. They become more capable in the intervening time, and we should expect better from modern figures. But I'm also not as mean as most people seem to think. I just demand to be impressed. And this $5 figure from three decades ago impresses me more than some modern deluxes. Hell, it impresses me more than some modern leaders. Posability is great. Head has a swivel and a ton of down. Shoulders pull a little more than a 90. Elbows can pull more than a 90, but you have to use the sword-wielding wrists to get past their right angle. Wrists obviously can wield said swords. You can fake a back crunch for a laugh. You can't pose it long-term like this, but it is a valid way to play with it. No waist. Almost no back on the legs, but they are hyper unimpeded forward and regular unimpeded out to the side. Normal 90 knees and feet with an extreme toe up. Do modern figures pose better? No, not typically, honestly. Some will for sure, but the ones that do are kind of distressingly rare. This is mildly above the average for today. I sincerely don't understand how Beast Wars got so much hate back in the day when the toys were this good. Truck not monkey? Well, I'm sorry, but truck is inferior, because truck can't pose while monkey can. If some motherfucker brings up the upcoming G1 upgrade Optimus Prime, I will punch something that didn't deserve it. 
transformation is sublime. It's one step. I literally don't have anything to add. You flip the tail down, press it hard enough to lock it into place, and that's pretty much it. You have to flip the feet out too, so it's not truly one step, but I'm fairly sure that in the time it took me to say these sentences, I can transform this thing like 10 times. And then the not actually an iguana mode is adorable. Iguanas is a liar, because this ain't an iguana. This is a frilled lizard. And no, that's not just me describing what this looks like, that's what it's called. And I really wish it wasn't because it makes me sound stupid. But what isn't stupid is how much more the speckled paint makes sense now. It actually looks interesting this way. Also very 70s. Brown and yellow, the colors that defined America for a decade. This one-step changer from the 90s has less kibble than Kingdom Air Razor by a lot. It doesn't look like a real animal, but it's remarkably convincing for something this price from this long ago. Reminds me of those old crappy badly painted rubber dinosaurs with the squeakers in their throats, yet somehow infinitely better while also transforming. Posability is pretty simple. Mouth opens and closes, arms still work as well as ever, and there's something so adorably man in a suit about that. I feel like I'm about to watch Anguirus go get his ass kicked for the umpteenth time. Tail kind of waggles, and back legs kind of rotate up and down. It's not a ton, but like, Studio Series Rhinox is significantly more of a brick than this. And look, if I haven't sold you on this yet, I'm not going to sell you on this. Every single time I've reviewed a Beast Wars figure so far, it's held up. These figures aged like fine wine. Are they old? Yes. Do they feel old? A bit. Do they feel as old as they should? Not even close. In all earnesty, it's a figure with a bit of a quaint look, but it styles on anything in its price range. Hell, it styles on core figures, which are way smaller, cost more, and pose worse. It's better looking than any modern one-step changer that I've ever seen. The accessory is nice and is satisfying to do the click-click on. Posability is still good by our standards now. This thing has more posing than basically anything they made after the start of Armada till 2016. And even then, it's still better than most of those. The flip transformation is endearing and satisfying, and the not guana mode is great. It's adorable. This is the mode that I keep this thing in because he's got that shit-eating face. Which maybe explains his colors. It's a great figure. You're probably not gonna buy it. You probably aren't going to watch this video. But if you did, you won't be disappointed. On either front. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.